Well, it's time to finally tear this massive CRT apart and see what's really going on inside of here. I had a lot of requests from Patreon members and even some other viewers that were asking me to detail how to tear this monitor down in the correct way because it is a little bit different. Uh, there are some screws in awkward positions. So we're going to go ahead and start by just removing the shell. If you want to see more about how this monitor works, you could check out one of the other two videos that's already been produced about this specific monitor. But today we're just going to get in here and we're going to, again, start by taking this shell off and we'll look at the circuit boards and we're going to decide from there what we need to do next as far as for restoration. But the exciting thing is that today we've got three different camera angles to try to work from so that I can hopefully get a good shot of where each spot is on here when we're taking this apart. And again, this is probably more something that somebody with um, a little bit of experience would try to do, not somebody who just randomly comes across one of these CRTs. But if you do want to look at and see what's going on inside, then definitely take a watch on this video. Uh, but this is not something that you should uh, really be doing as your first attempt to work on a CRT. All right, now let's jump in, get a closer look at the back. I have removed six different screws to this point. They were all Phillips head screws, and I've got a tray here, and actually just five of them have been removed. One of them up here, it would actually won't come out. So I think that there might be a piece of plastic broken there that's preventing us from getting them out. All right, we've got one screw still in, and then the five that have been removed are these four on the back panel, and there's one up at the top of the back. And you'll notice there still are quite a few down here at our input board. I've left those in place um, on purpose because there are two more screws that we need to get out first before we do anything else. And they are underneath on the bottom side of this monitor. I'm going to go ahead and warn you. In the first video, I told you how heavy this monitor was. And it's not easy to work on. So you have to be prepared <laughs> to physically be able to move this around some uh, to, to service it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt it on its side. And thankfully, it has some handles on each side that are heavy duty and will allow me to do that. But I just need to move it up and over like that. And we can look at the bottom and the back of the monitor. Back here, we've got some screws, two more. And those would be extremely difficult to get to without getting in here and flipping this uh, on its side like this. You could flip it on its face, but that's, that's a little bit more dangerous. I'd just recommend going on the side. So let's get these two screws out and then the ones on the input board. And then hopefully we can just slide this shell off and it won't be too difficult. All right, there's our second screw. And I again, I don't really think it would be possible to get the shell off without tilting it on one of its sides. Now we're just going to have to tilt it back. That way we could try to get the input board screws removed. All right, let's move this now back on its regular side. All right, 
so that's all the screws that we can get out of the back of the shell. Hopefully, if we remove the six remaining screws on the input board, that will let us get that off. So that's what we'll do right now. And we'll see if we can get this shell open. this thing I think I'm going to need to lay it down on its face now I've got a nice thick cushion I need to lay it down on the screen side so that I can actually get the shell to lift up and off so just slowly tilt it down onto that cushion We've had kind of a breakthrough moment here. I think I finally got the shell loosened up and coming apart. Again, I had to flip it down on its face. I had to get all the screws out. The thing that was holding it up was the main screw at the top where the hairline crack was. I had to get that screw out and the owner told me he didn't care too much about the plastic. So we did damage the corner plastic a little bit. I'll show you some pictures of that afterwards. But we'll try to clean it up and make it not look so bad. The tricky thing is when you lift it, you can't use the handles. They're attached to the front of the frame. Just lift it up and pull that bad boy off and oh yeah, that thing, whew, that is dirty. So we'll flip it over here. Let you get a better look at it because now I should be able to just flip it up and we can start looking at all the beautiful things going on here there we go all right finally opened up and we'll take a look at the inside here look at some of the dust get some cameras set up a different angle let you see what it looks like inside well let's take a first look back here inside this NEC XM 29 and look at what we've got going on and there's a lot of stuff back here so let's get a little closer and there's our anode cap and our deflection yoke assembly right here just a big layer of dust you can see on there pretty easy to see oh yeah so definitely needs a cleaning. We've got a potentiometer here. I'm not quite sure what that goes to, so I'm not just going to spin it for no reason. So over here on our left side, under all this shielding, you'll notice a transformer right here, some large capacitors back there. This is going to be our main power supply, I'm believing, for this monitor uh, because it's just so encased. I can't read the label down there. That's what I believe. This is a fan, so I wanted to show, kind of explain that. Look, there's one 12 volt DC 0 0.09 amp fan here. And then I've got a second one installed above this board, which is the RGB color board right here. And then the one next to the input board down here that is extremely filthy. And I think that's why it sounded so loud and it does sound so loud is it it's three fans that are all kicking on together so that's <laughs> it's probably changeable because it's a pretty common design for a fan it's just instead of changing one we're going to need to replace three fans now so that's the power supply board let's get in here and see if we can look down into the in there any we've got kind of one board but it's daisy chained together a little bit in there if you'll notice it's brown on this side and then we've got a green circuit board on here so technically it's two boards this one has a lot of chips on it and this one looks to be our flyback and mostly our deflection 
So like our vertical and horizontal deflection is going to be for sure on that board. And then that leads up to this board, which also says it's deflection board on the side. But, man, just look at the amount of dust that's built up in here over the years. And this, uh, this will actually benefit from just a cleaning. But it's not got an, an enormous or absurd amount of caps in it. And the way it's designed, you can service almost one board at a time and then plug it back in and test it out before you move on. So that's a positive note on the servicing of this. Now this tube itself is made by manu or manufactured by NEC. So they made the tube in-house. We'll, we'll see who made the flyback when we get it out. Here's a closer look at the back side of the deflection board, the secondary deflection board. A lot of transistors on that board, it looks like. Thankfully, it's in good shape to begin with. But NEC did a really good job of designing these, at least to get a lot of the heat out. That way, the components would last as long as possible. Now, this one will get hot, I'm sure. I bet there's a lot of dust built up inside there. And there are a lot of capacitors along that back end of that board and inside there. Now, thankfully, they're Rubicon, you can see actually 105 degree Celsius rating. So they're really high end capacitors. But, you know, 30 years of heat or 25 years of heat and use will wear them out, even the best ones. Now down here, we've got our video input output board, some Toshiba and Sony chips in them. And then on this board, we've got surface mount capacitors. Now, thankfully, they are not in the high heat areas because I don't really want to change those if they're not leaking. But that might be something we'll have to look into also. We've got some switches and things we need to look at. I haven't taken off the control panel board yet, but that can come out, or the input board panel. There's our fan. And then if we do look up on the back of the RGB board, and zoom in. Let's zoom in up here towards the top of this board. And I can tell somebody's been in here and tried to service this at some point. Not, not very good. At least they didn't do a very good job. Looks like that's going to be some solder problems. So that'll definitely need to be touched up. Seems bad for solder joints. Not really cleaned well afterwards. So I don't know whether they went in there and those might be potentiometers or something else marked with an E on the board. We'll have to see. So that's a board that I'm concerned with that does need to be serviced. Maybe one of the first boards we look at. This one and the side deflection board over here. Those are two that will most likely be starting with. And my plan will be to start with the outside boards. And then as I get each individual board, we'll look over here at the power board. But as I get each one of these individual boards out, I'll be able to clean in around the spot. And it's a great idea to service one board at a time on something this large, just because if there's an issue after you service something and you've serviced all the boards at once, you have no idea where you need to go back to to maybe fix something that was damaged or that needed a repair. Let's see, we do have some tiny little 5 watt, maybe 16 ohm speakers here for our stereo audio that's built in. The neck board does not have any capacitors on it. From what I can see in here, 
But maybe that's why this daughter board over here, or this main board, has the capacitors in it and the color drives, etc. it looks like. And so it's just going to be a very large project, but I'm very glad we got it opened because in all seriousness, it needs a, it needs a thorough cleaning. But that's how you get it open. And now we just need to start tearing the boards out and working on those and cleaning them and everything. So we'll do that next. But that's how you get that shell off. Very, very difficult compared to just as easy PVMs. All right, see you guys next time with some more retro content.